Incra Master Lift 2, Woodpecker Coping Sled, Whiteside Round Rail and Style Bit. Three for one video next. I'm Rick, and this. Shut the heck up, you stinking boosters. <laughs> this is the shack. Hey everybody, welcome. Changing it up a bit this year, changing the format, we're diving right into the video. As I stated in the intro, I am making this video a three for one. We're going to demonstrate three different tools as I remake a mistake. I screwed up on some rail and style doors, not Making them, once I got them finished, I screwed something up. So you'll see that in a moment. So in this video, because of my mistake, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show some of the upgrades that I've done in the shop, updating the tools and such, demonstrate three of them. In this video, we're going to demonstrate the Woodpecker Iron Grip Coping Sled, the Ancra Master Lift 2. These are rail and style bits. These are the round rail and style bits from Whiteside. Here we are at the router table stand. If you look at it, I don't know what I did. <laughs> I, the must have been debris or something. All I can think of is when I first went to square the edges, I set them up on my table saw, put them in the miter, ran it across just to shave off an, a little bit to smooth it out. Somehow, as you can see, it was at an angle, so these aren't straight no more. They're kind of weird. This one you can see goes way up. Higher here, lower here, so I don't know what I did. So I decided I'm gonna bust these apart, remake the doors. I, they just didn't come out right. I screwed up when I tried to square them up. So let me go and get my stock cut and I'll be right back. Now the first thing I need to do, I need to get my bit in here. My nice Incra Master Lift 2. This is the smallest plate that comes with it originally. I have the other plates that have the slots in them. If you're looking for a router lift that's got one of the best dust collection systems on it, you need to get the Incra and you need to get their clean sweep inserts. I'm using one of the original inserts that came with the lift. Smallest hole because I want something to cover this while I'm not using it. It's just the way I am. Pop it open and I can pull that out of there. Unlock this. I love the lock. That just gives me added security. This isn't going to move. And I thought I would like the Rockler because it goes quicker, but it doesn't kill me. I mean, a couple turns, the rock over it to be up. It's not going to kill me to do a few extra turns for this to come up so I can insert my router bit. Not bad at all. That doesn't kill me in time. The profile will cut first. We're going to do the ingrain cuts. You do these first, so when you have them cut, then you can set the profile up more easily with this and get it set really, really close. I contacted Whiteside they say half inch up to a bit, up to three quarters of an inch, max, I think 24,000 or something that they said. Me, I am going to run this about 18,000. Now, one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to have this all the way down, tighten it up. You have this little bead right, right here. You want it about an eighth of an inch, so you want it just about a sixteenth or so below that. I like to tighten it by hand just so it won't drop in there. So now I can adjust exactly where I want it. And that's good right there. Good. We're going to quickly set up our iron grip coping sled so we can start doing our cuts. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take a piece of stock, it's just three quarter inch stock. I'm going to push the base of the iron grip coping sled against that stock. What I want to make sure is that the stock and the base are all in line all parallel with the fence because that's what we're going to be referencing off of is the fence. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring up my clear acrylic guide and make sure I'll put my hands on front and back, squeeze, make sure it's all secure in line with the fence. Again, push the bottom base, make sure everything's in line. Hold this here and I'm going to tighten that so it doesn't have a chance to move. Make sure it's snug. Now I'm remove my material and we're set. Now this acrylic 
guide will reference off the fence. So as we slide it through, it will keep it straight and true to the fence through the whole cutting process. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get this piece of material, set it in here, and then I'm gonna take this top plate, slide it, not push hard, just make sure it's secure against the material, and I'm gonna lock it in. Now, it should be enough where I can still pull my material out so I can switch it around. What this does is basically, when you tighten that down, it secures it against the backing board. As you feed your material through the router bit, there, it keeps it secure in 90 to the bit, so there's no chance for that kicking out or moving. So you don't have to have a lot of pressure on that. Now, if I had that set properly, I can move my material in and out so I can take it out, turn it around, and cut the other end which we have there. Now, I'm going to set this against the fence. I'm going to slide my backer board against the fence. Personally, I don't put a lot of pressure on there. I put it on there and I literally back it off maybe 20 thousandths. I pull it where I can just barely start seeing an opening and that's where I want it. Now I'm gonna take the supply tool that came with my iron grip coping sled and I'm gonna tighten up the screws on my sacrificial wood here. Get that out of the way. Just snug it, you don't have to tighten it down hard, three of them, and I think it's very secure and won't move. Now that set, I should be able to slide it through away just enough where I should have no issues as it passes the opening here. Perfect. Doesn't touch, doesn't have a hiccup, nothing. Now a little quick side note, as you see, the material just fits through here. If you have wider material, you can go underneath the slate here and loosen this center post on both the front and back. You have a slit down here, this can go back about another two inches so you can accommodate up to about a four and a half to five inch piece of wood. I, I'll put a, up here, I forget exact measurements now. Just a little side note so you you know, you can accommodate a wider piece of stock. Now with the back of board set, everything's good. I can slide my test piece in, push it up against the fence, make sure this is against the fence. Again, I will push front and back, make sure everything's secure, push that against it, lock it down. And basically that's it, I'm good to go. I can slide this through. As you see, it doesn't hit nothing. That's how we set up the iron grip coping sled. Now let's get ready to do some cuts. So now what do I do? I get my test pieces, get my sled. I will use this to look at the profile and see where it is I want it to go. Now reposition the camera, hopefully give you guys a little better view of this. And there's a couple ways you could do this. Some people, depending on the profile, will look down here where the profile drops and go just a little bit below that. So that profile, when it rounds over, will have a little bit of a ledge here. Or some people will take this and go about an eighth of an inch here, mark it, and get the bottom of the bit on that. Just, they want just an eighth of an inch. I think it's personal preference. I don't know. I'm just gonna go with the way I've done it before. I have this sitting about where I want it. It's right there. See, it's just a little bit below, it's about an eighth, but I got the profile here, right about there. So I'm gonna give it a test cut there. I think that's where I want it. So I'm gonna lock this in so it does not move on me. Yeah, I have to be careful. I wanna watch the carbide tips, so that fits in there, that's perfect. I'm going to bring my fence up and set it up. Now we're ready, let me double, double check. That on there. All right, we'll do one cut and we'll see what it looks like. As you see, that's our profile. We'll go in. Actually, it looks pretty good. Not bad. 
I like that. We're gonna go with that. So let's cut these bad boys up and we're good to go. Before I go any further, I just want you to see that's all there is as far as dust and leftover from this. There is none. Look at that by the blade. There's absolutely nothing. That dust collection works so well. I am exceedingly pleased on this. So let's switch out the blade and get it set up for the next cut. So you guys make sure you see it. I have my blade set that's really, really close. That looks very, very close, so we'll leave it right there for now, and we'll do a test cut. So let me get the fence all set up, and we'll do our test cut. Well, I have to do this over because the last time I recorded this, I forgot to turn on my microphone. So just to remind you of something, I have these laid out. Now, when I had these up, I actually forgot to mark on the inside, so I got arrows in, so I know this is the edge I want to profile. Get back here, it focuses in. So I'm going to run one more, one more through so you can see me do it. This is the inside, so I want to make sure that's against the fence. I have my little push block that I have just for this. That way I can keep my fingers away, push against the fence, and these feather boards keep it down. And it's got a little hook on the back, just enough to pull this through. And the only reason is because I just don't feel comfortable because if this is in the way, but trying to push this in there with these on does make it a little bit difficult. If it's a little bit wider, I could do it, but this makes it very nice and handy. So I'm gonna back this off, start everything up and do another cut and show you. And that will go in right there and right here. Beautiful, beautiful. So that'll work out really, really nice. I got to profile all these, so I'm going to go off camera, get all these cut, rails and styles, and we'll be right back. Came out really, really nice. Actually better than the first time. Second time around, it's Doing really good. <laughs> that is absolutely phenomenal. This is the final outcome. That's what it looks like. I am beyond words. Seriously, this is so nice. Rail and style doors, I've never been able to do these. This is my first time using them. And what a, just a complete pleasure it is to use my new tools to make these efficiently, safely, unbelievable. I, I, I have no words, I, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Fantastic router lift, unbelievable copy sled, some of the best router bits around. Combine them and you get superior outcome. Unbelievable. If you had any questions, hopefully by this it maybe answered some, but if it didn't, do not hesitate to ask them in the comment section below. I will get to them if I can answer them. If not, I will find an answer some way. Thank you so much for watching. Be blessed. Take back your shack. Nailed it! For your sanity. Kind of excited. Can't you tell? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next video.